Good morning, Oasis. I'm so excited for today. I'm glad you're with us and uh, looking forward to uh, giving or bringing a message that I believe the Lord has given me, dropped it into my heart. In, I carry a note in my Bible that was given to me in 2011 by a young Haitian man. Um, Marcy and I were in Lanzig, Haiti to officiate at the graduation of the students of Ecole Biblique uh, Internationale. And we had, the Oasis had uh, sponsored a whole lot of students. And that year we were graduating 54 students with diplomas and 56 with uh, certificates. Then they were completing their work and they were going out to be pastors and missionaries in the land of Haiti. And, uh, or in the country of Haiti, and each student had completed hours of work in desperate conditions. And as we were finishing the graduation, one of the young men came to me, and his name was uh, Samuel Pierre Louis. And I carry this note in my Bible, and I've been praying for him constantly over the years. And he said this, I'm Samuel Pierre Louis. And I want you to pray for me because I want to be a slave for Christ. God bless you, slave of Christ. He signed it. And I remember back listening to the stories of those, some of those students. And there was a young man and his sister, young, two young people. And they'd walk, they would walk twice a week for 20 kilometers each way from way up in the mountains of Haiti. And they would cross rivers and they would go through very, very dangerous territory. And they were the only believers in their, in their community, let alone in their family. And when they had started the school, that's what they were, the only people. Somebody had led them to the Lord. And in the end, they had a church in there. Their family had all come to Jesus because they decided that walking that distance was not not a hardship. They were all in. They were all in. Can you turn to somebody and say they were all in? History has is replete with story after story of those who have given all for the sake of a cause that is much bigger than themselves. Heroes who gave all so others could live or experience life and freedom to a greater measure. And we see that in the world today. Many, many people rising to give hope to others. The Bible records many who were willing to lay it all down. And I love 2 Samuel 23 where David records the, the stories of his mighty men. There's Eliezer who fought so hard. He was one-on-one, -on -one, hand hand-to-hand combat for for hours and hours until the end of the fight where they had to pry his hands off of his sword. There was Shammah, I think of Shammah, and it's incredible. He stood in the middle of his bean field, in the middle of his field of lentils, and he fought and he fought and he fought until that field began to became his. And I tell you, there are some of you in this place today that are watching, you need to keep on fighting. Don't give up, don't give up. The, the, the victory is coming. There was Abishai and there was Benaiah and they would fight hand to hand and win these battles because they were willing. They had a vision of something bigger than themselves. I think of Daniel and his record of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And I, just it's overwhelming to think that these three young men were willing to stand in the face of a violent king and in the face of a culture and decide not to bow down even though there was a furnace of fire that was waiting to them for them if they chose the direction they chose. I think of John the Baptist, a voice crying in the wilderness. Here's a man who is called by God to go and become a voice preparing the way for Jesus. His life was such as he was living in the wilderness in sackcloth. The Bible says he was wearing coats of camel hair and eating locusts and honey. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? That's dedication. He was boldly stepping into a role that was appointed by God 
to him to call the nation to repent and to return to true worship, preparing the way for Jesus to come. And eventually, it would cost him his head. I think of Stephen, the first martyr of the early church. He refused to change his conviction even when facing stoning. I, I was thinking of the young men. There was 21 young men pictured in orange jumpsuits with their captors standing behind them ready to take their lives. And the, the accounts, the, 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 the testimonies that have come out of that, none of them, none of them were willing to deny Jesus and in fact declared it to their captors and some of them have now come to follow Jesus because they were willing to go all in. The family in Pakistan that had their house burned down, they were threatened, their house was burned down and they were tortured and, and given, but they refused to go all in even if it meant that they had to go live in the, in the woods for a while till they could find another place of refuge. See, we're coming into through a season right now where survival and getting by has become very much in focus. For many, just getting by has become a th level of thriving, and yet this has become a great opportunity in so many ways. It's been a time to refocus, a time of reevaluating life's priorities. Too often we think we've been following Jesus, but in reality, we've asked Jesus to follow us. We have wanted his comfort. We've wanted his strength. We've wanted his blessing. We really don't want to go anywhere without him right beside us or right behind us. But am I following him? Am I truly following him? Is he in the lead? In this Instagram generation, I wonder who is following whom. History records great moves of God. Times when there's been amazing miracles, testimonies of lives transformed by love and grace of God. When addictions are broken on mass, when um, order and hope is restored in communities, when families are restored, when healing happens, and when human life begins to be valued from con conception to death, God knows we need that right now. Anytime God is about to do anything amazing in life, in a life or in a nation, he calls for us to consecrate ourselves, to set ourselves to focus on his desires and not our own. That pattern was set in, in when Israel crossed the Jordan River and Joshua um, was given the task of leading these people into a land of promise. He was in, into a land of opportunity. And Joshua 3.5, he gives the instructions to Israel. He says, consecrate yourselves. In, order, in other words, set yourselves apart, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Are we ready for amazing things? Are we hungry for amazing things? Are we ready for those things that are going to be beyond what we could hope or imagine? Be but I'll tell you this, when we make Jesus and his desire our focus, rather than our own desire, we become all in. Mark Batterson, in his book, All In, You Are One Decision from a Totally Different Life, makes this statement. Consecration is an ever-deepening love for Jesus. It's a childlike trust in our Heavenly Father and a blind obedience to the Holy Spirit. It's going all in for the one who is the all in all, who went all in for us. Jesus demonstrated all in. From the moment of his birth to the journey Right through to the cross, he demonstrated for us what it was like to be all in. Even to the point on the night before his crucifixion, he is in the garden. He is spending in that secret place. He is meeting with his heavenly father and he's saying, Lord, if this, if it's possible, if it is at all possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, 
Not my will, but yours be done. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And we can take that phrase and be, let it become our heart's desire. Hebrews 12, 2 says, tells us that we can live all in by keeping our eyes on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from start to finish. He was willing to die a shameful death on the cross because, and because of the joy set before him. He knew, he, because of the joy he knew would be his afterwards. Now he is seated in the place of highest honor beside God's throne in heaven. I was reading from the New Living Translation there. I want us to look for a little while at Jesus' call of the disciples. We find that in Mark chapter 3, and we're going to be looking at a number of passages of Scripture in the book of Mark. And Jesus is starting into his ministry. He's reasonably early into the ministry, and he started calling the disciples. And in uh, Mark chapter 3, in about verse 7, it says, A great multitude from Galilee followed him, all from Judea and from Jerusalem and Edomia and beyond the Jordan to Tyre and Sidon. All over the place, they were starting to hear about this man who was bringing so much hope and life. There was something different about him. And there was a hunger that was growing and they were willing to walk for miles just to come and taste and drink from the well of hope and life. And it got to the point where the crowds were getting so big, he told his disciples that there was a, a small boat should be ready for him to slip in. He was along the side of the Sea of Galilee at the moment. And sometimes our ministry that we do for God is in the practical things. He told them to just to go out and get the boat. Listen, you might not believe that driving a bus for God is, is ministry. It is. Dr making some cookies for the kids club is is, is ministry, it's vital, it's important, is bringing the whole package. And then he realized in this that it was time to build the next generation of Jesus followers. And so he called, he went up into the mountain in verse 13 and says, he called to himself those he wanted and they came to him and he appointed 12. He appointed them. That word appointed means to make someone into something both in a continuing and a completed sense. Do you realize that when Jesus calls you, he sees you as complete already, but he's working on you to bring you to what he sees? We go through life thinking that we are just going through a series of events, but I'll tell you what, each one of them has been designed to help formulate you into the place where Jesus sees you. Tell somebody in your room right now, he's still working on me. He's still working on me. And there's a couple of things I want to draw from in, in this call. And things that are very, very important to uh, those of us that are walking, that are going to, and are in the process and are living in an all an all in lifestyle he appointed the 12 so that they might be with him we're going to look at two things so they might be with him so that he could send them out secondly there is no substitute for time in the presence of the lord absolutely no substitute it's in that place that we are restored it's in that place that we are refreshed. It's, in, it's there where we start to know, truly know the peace of God. It is there that the joy of the Lord becomes our strength. It is in his presence that he imparts his heart to us. And it's in there that we begin to see by faith all those things he has for those who love him. It's in that place of being with him. It's in that place where he calls us to be all in, to be filled with his heart, even for those who don't know him yet. He's calling us to be with him. In, 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 in Daniel chapter 6, there's a beautiful, beautiful example of a young man who was, had the call of God, and it was... 
Daniel records this. He says, in the year that King Uzziah died, and, and, and just by way of using a word and in, in a description, Uzziah means self-strength. In the year that, that my self-strength died, I begin to see the Lord. He saw the Lord high and lifted up. He was sitting on the throne high and lifted up. The train of his robe filled the temple, and above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. And these angels were worshiping, and they were fire angels. There was the presence of God was so strong. And one cried to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his, filled with his glory. They worshiped. And Isaiah in that context becomes very overwhelmed with his own inadequacy. And the posts of the temple, the doorposts were shaken. There was so much authority and power and overwhelming sound in that room. And sometimes when we come into the presence of the Lord, we become very, very, very overwhelmed with who he is and who we aren't yet. And Isaiah, he's standing there and he says, Whoa. Woe is me, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the middle of a people of unclean lips. My eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And he was trembling because there, when you come and have an encounter with God like that, you realize that he is Lord. He is the King of kings. He is the one. And the purpose of encounter is to capture our heart. It's not just to overwhelm us. It's to capture our heart. And Isaiah responds that he says, The seraphim flew to me and having a, in his hand a live coal, which he had taken from, with tongs from the altar, and he touched my mouth. We need the fire of God. A couple of weeks ago, Pastor Brandon spoke hope in the fire of God. There is a hope that comes, a hope that comes for us as individuals and a hope that comes for our community and hope that comes for a, a, our nation, a hope for a move of God. Because what happened after that, Isaiah hears the voice of God and he says, whom shall I send? Whom will, who will go for us? And Isaiah's response says this, here am I. Lord, send me. See, the purpose of encounter is always to capture the heart of God and to go. We're called to go and do. In this time, in the presence of God is leading us into action. Who will I send? And my prayer is that we will all say, Hear my Lord, send me, send me, send me. I'm all in. I'm all in. And the second thing we want to capture with that in Mark chapter 6 is that he wanted to prepare them. He wanted to, so he could send them out to preach and have power. And that word power there is exousia in the Greek. It means authority. It means the right to act. It means capacity in, they have the capacity to act and they have a delegated authority because Jesus was also a man under authority. And we need to capture that part. He is giving us authority to heal sicknesses and cast out demons. When he's given us a call, he gives us the capacity to do it. When he gives us a job, he gives us a capacity to do it. And learners practice. In Mark chapter 6, if you turn over a few pages in your Bible, Mark chapter 6, and we'll pick it up at verse 7. Um, he called, he had sent the disciples out. This was several weeks later after he had uh, initially called them. He sends them out on a mission, on their first missions trip, and he calls the 12 to himself. And he begins to send them out two by two, and he gave them power over unclean spirits. And... Verse 12, we drop down, he, verse 12, he says, They went out, they preached that people should repent or turn around and go the other direction. And they cast out many demons and they anointed with oil many who were sick and they healed them. They were all in. See, learners practice. Learners practice. 
And all in people become transformers. They are more than meets the eye. You might just think somebody looks, I, I know who that is. I know what they look like. I know where they're coming from. I know, I recognize them. But what you don't recognize often is the power and authority that rests in us. When we let that out, when we go and we start to do, what is inside is allowed to come out. And over in Mark 6 and verse 30, they had a successful mission. And Jesus recognized that. And he's, in, in verse 30, it says, The apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all the things both they had done and what they had taught. Can you imagine? Here's these 12 guys. They've gone out and they've done exactly what Jesus told them to do. And they're so excited. Look, you should have seen. I was talking about this and I was telling them about this and these people started to coming. It started to come and they started to desire to turn. Jesus, they're going to follow you. They're going to follow you. They want to can they want to they want to become part of the kingdom they want to become part of the family did you see that one that had that withered hand i i prayed for my laid hands on him and it became whole that one that was full of demons and it was was just like shattered their life was shattered we put our hands on them we we and 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 the demons left the de wow can you imagine being so excited and and they're in that place and he says listen come aside you guys have worn, you're, you're tired, come aside. And they went, bring yourself to a deserted place and rest a while. A lot of times when we are busy in the things of God, we, the desire of the Lord is to bring us to a place to rest. He's desiring something that uh, we need to take a, a, a break and and. Uh, refresh, we need to come into a place of intermission. And I have a sense that there's many here that are watching today. Some of you need an I, a, a, a Psalm 91 right now. You need to come into the secret place. And I just felt as I was preparing this message, I felt very strongly that this was a word for a number of you today that you need to go through Psalm, or I, Psalm 91 and, and just allow it to minister to you. Climb into that word. Climb into that word and let God minister to you. Let the Lord saturate you. Let him refresh your soul. Let him minister all of the truths in that Psalm today. He has set his love on you. What was interesting with the disciples it was right back into the ministry. They tried to go into a quiet place to get away and to relax, and all of a sudden the crowd was there, the demands were there, and, and, and Jesus starts to minister, and there's lots of them. And I believe in this season there are many coming. There are many coming to see and, and to get in touch with Jesus, to come into place of contact with his people. Listen, the, the, the fields are white to harvest. The fields are white to harvest. Come, become part of the harvesting crew. Get involved. Just let, and even when you're tired, what happened in this situation was Jesus had called them out to a place of rest and the crowd followed him. Sometimes you just want to get away, but stuff follows you. People follow you. They're so desperate. They're so needy. And they're ministering. Jesus is ministering. And the disciples recognize after a period of time that these, it's a long day. And these people are hungry. And what does Jesus do? He turns to them and he says, give them something to eat. You give them something to eat. And all he could find was five loaves and two fish. And they watched as Jesus gave thanks and he multiplied it. Pr Priscilla Shear says this, that the gift of the disciples, the gift to the disciples was the multitude. The gift to the multitude was the five loaves and two fish. We don't know that people become our gift. 
because in that gift, God is revealing himself. He is multiplying in that opportunity to minister to somebody else. He is revealing himself in a way that is so full, so full. You realize that they fed all the people. They had them sit down. They fed them all. There was 5,000 men plus women and children. So conservatively, I would say probably in the neighborhood of about 11,000 people. They fed them all and there were 12 baskets left over. One of the things I've realized about Jesus, when he provides, there's leftovers. I love leftovers. Man, I love leftovers. You reconstruct those things that the flavors have all saturated and the leftovers, in the leftovers, the flavor of Jesus saturates that and the power of God goes in. You see, when I'm willing to go all in, God makes a way where there is no way. When I'm willing to go all in, the mission becomes the life source. When I am willing to go all in, personal cost is not an issue. Many were martyred because of the cost of because of the cause of Christ. Every one of the original disciples paid the price in their physical life. All of them were, were slain in some form because of standing up for Jesus, other than John the Baptist, who they tried to boil in oil, they tried to keep him. But God provided a way of escape for him. When I am willing to go all in, my goal is to bring glory and honor to the one who set the example for me, Jesus Christ, the one who for the joy set before him endured the cross, dis despised the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Today, you are one, one decision from a total, away from a totally different life. I, I would like to introduce you to Jesus. If you have never met Jesus before, you never have made a commitment to him, and some of you at some point in time have responded to a, a question whether you would like to ask Jesus into your life and you held up at a camp or a kids club or somewhere in there and, and you said, yes, I, I, I would like to do that. I'd like to have Jesus come into my heart. But then from that point on, you really didn't do anything other than have in the back of your mind that I did that at one point. I made a, I, and so I'm okay. I'm going to heaven. I'm not going to spend eternity in hell. But I'll tell you this what Jesus wants, he appointed so that he could begin a journey to take you through to the picture that he sees for you. That's for you today. If you have never ask the Lord Jesus to be your Savior. Never ask Him to come in and forgive your sin and to become your Lord, that you want to follow Him and not just have Him follow you. Would you pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I ask now that you would forgive my sin. I believe you came for me. I believe you died for me. I believe you've come to give me new life. And today, I give my life all in, all in. And secondly, for those of you that have been following the Lord for a long time, perhaps, are you willing to go all in? Are you willing to set yourself to serve the one who will do amazing th things through you. His grace, in other words, his rich resources in every aspect of your life are sufficient. They will always be sufficient. And second thing that we need to know, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Would you pray with me today? Father, thank you that you gave us the example of Jesus who went all in, who just lived an exemplary life for us to show us that we can do all in. We can be all in because of your strength, your grace, your resources. I ask, Father, today that you would bless 
and you would keep and you would comfort, and you would strengthen, and you would guide, and you would bring along human resources, and you would bring along financial resources. You would bring along all those th things that we need to complete the mission you have for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We give you our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed, Oasis. Have a good